welcome to this interaction with business standards sir we'll just start up with a few questions nikunj you can go first firstly i wanted to ask you you know uh, about uh, bank privatization the government has uh, deferred the plan to privatize public sector banks uh, as the legal amendments have not been made yet uh, do you think privatization of psbs is an idea whose time has come and also do you think uh, the rbi should relax criteria to allow corporates especially with experience in uh, finance business to participate in the privatization process if you actually see the divestment of air india moving ahead with the ipo of lic these are all uh, clear indications of the government's intent to move ahead with the uh, direction that it provided us on uh, divestment and we believe that uh, the uh, there's no reason to think otherwise as far as divestment of the two public sector banks and one general insurance company that the government had talked about as india is going to grow we need a larger stronger deeper financial services sector which includes bank which includes insurance companies asset managers and uh, it is for the regulators to decide what is the right way to do that but um, to build an atmanirbhar bharat we first need an atmanirbhar financial services industry i believe the rbi already has a definition of who they would allow and who they would not allow uh, and uh, based on their experience uh, i feel that good quality players should be allowed on the other hand what is equally important is for rbi to build a discussion around what the future of uh, lending looks like we are seeing the digital world create significant amounts of disruption and disintegrated disintegration of what were traditional methods of providing such services so uh, a discussion on that i think uh, is very timely uh, there's you know there's been some hiccups in the current uh, privatizations that have been uh, privatization of psus that have been announced recently uh, which are central electronics and power hunts so do you think that that process should be strengthened and a rigorous criteria should be in place to screen bidders for other psus as well that are that have been put on block so very clearly you need a transparent clear well thought out process and a consistent process uh, that needs to be made then you may still have some gaps you need to correct those there's no perfect way of doing things uh, i believe the intent of the government is clear that government should not be in business and other than maybe for some critical um, entities that uh, they would want to control uh, they are intent on uh, divesting the rest so there is a process that needs to be followed there are many sensitivities that are involved so some of these things take time so we've seen uh, fdi uh, being hiked in insurance uh, sector and you know some of the partners of in their indian jvs have uh, shown their interest to hike their stake uh, what do you think more needs to be done for them to you know come to india or do you think our own indian players are are, are good enough to be here uh, to create more jobs or do you think that they more investments do need to come in and what more needs to be done uh, towards that we still don't have a domestic financial sector that is strong enough to support uh, the growth opportunity that we have um, and as i mentioned in my presentation also that because of the changing nature of geopolitics india can become the manufacturing hub of the world so we need capital for that uh, and for foreign capital to come in they need to see consistent policies they need to see a proper road map and they need to ensure that risk adjusted they can make a reasonable amount of return but we have to also be cognizant of the fact as we have seen in the last 6 months that capital will foreign capital especially will find the best uh, risk reward uh, geography over a period of time so capital may go out also like it has done so it cannot substitute creating a strong domestic financial services industry led by banking led by asset management led by insurance and pension we need a holistic view across all these to be taken by the government and the regulators so that we continue to strengthen these as well what what do you think needs to be done more reforms need to be undertaken in the insurance sector per se so there are multiple things that need to be done we need to expand banking uh, so that we can increase financial inclusion digital banking has shown now that uh, whether you are somebody in rural india or uh, urban india your aspiration is the same so how do we meet those aspirations we have to take banking closer to people and digital digital tools can make a very significant uh, 
benefit. We then have our, most of our businesses are small and mid-sized. And these businesses, we need to leverage them. We need to take capital closer to them. We need, for example, for the export opportunities, for them to build technology capabilities through um, R&D initiatives between industry and academia. We need, with all the FTAs that the government is signing, we need to make sense of that to them. Um, because large companies, again, understand that. And we need to see that capital is easily available to them so that they can grow. And then you have the large companies. Large companies, as we are seeing, have built the necessary capabilities where they are no, where they are not only the manufacturing hub for the world, uh, but they want to go out, they want to acquire, they want to build new capacities overseas. So we need a few large banks that can help them strategically do this as well. When it comes to insurance, we have to, for example, insurance as a sector is now with the private sector over 20 years old. It has gathered a large amount of assets. How do we put those assets into more productive use? How do we reduce the um, uh, percentage of assets that have to be put into government securities and move them to funding startups, move them to funding infrastructure projects, move them to creating a solid viable uh, corporate bond market in India. Uh, these things don't happen overnight, but uh, we have to work on each of these norms so that together then we create that firepower that manufacturing India needs to become that manufacturing destination for the world. Mr. Bajaj, uh, we'll start off with your, uh, your outlook for the FI23, the range that you gave, uh, based on three different oil prices. One is oil at averaging $110 a barrel. One is oil averaging uh, $100, $100 a barrel and one is oil averaging $90 a barrel. So that is 7.4 to 8.2% uh, 7 uh, growth rate. What scenario do you see more likely in this range? Do you think we will be hitting closer to the upper end or closer to the lower end? So if it, so if it stays around $100 level, then I think closer to 8% is what we can uh, look at. Because huh. see, there are things we can tweak as well. Uh, for example, while the interest cycle has changed now, the, what is the amount of interest rate uh, that will go up and uh, how much, uh, how often it happens will also depend on how inflation is on the ground. Partly that is dependent, we know, for the common man on uh, fuel prices. And that's where our suggestion to the government is in a collaborative manner between the center and the states uh, for the government to cut taxes right now on fuel. So it uh, helps uh, the pocket of the common man. In, in addition, the fuel inflation that we have uh, seen, uh, we are hopeful for a normal monsoon at this stage. That should help in abating that as well. Higher MSPs should make a difference. So uh, all this should then help to continue consumption the way it has been in the last few quarters. If not, there could be a marginal tip over there. But uh, we are still a consumption economy. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe that uh, we will see uh, reasonably good growth. Uh, what sort of a magnitude of impact are you seeing India Inc. face in its margin? No, we are already starting to see, see differs by sector, but corporates uh, margins have got partly compressed if you see in the mm -hmm. last quarter or two because input costs had started going up uh, and that's why you're seeing some amount of passing of that happening and that's why inflation is also picking up. So you will see some of that happening and it varies a lot sector to sector. Uh, Mr. Bajaj, thank you so much for your time, sir. Uh, thank you so much. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.